So let's keep our eyes on him, but at the same time, keep our eyes on David Pearson out on the race course. Tell you what, Jackie, you watch uh, Parsons, and I'll look for Pearson. Well, we've got there. He's coming to a stop there. Now, his crew, of course, are a first-class crew, but they can't be expected to be quite so good as the Wood Brothers, who look after David Pearson, or, for that matter, the Petty crew. And, of course, top-class men, but to compete against these two other teams that I mentioned is something, because they're the best in the world. You can see they're changing the outside rubber there, the tires on this side of the car. They're changing the other ones as well. There, they're getting the car ready to go. All right, and here goes David Pearson by the front grandstand down the straightaway. He has the lead. There goes Pearson by. So Pearson has the lead. And uh, Parsons will hang on to second place, I believe, because Richard Petty was a lap down. We'll see how they wind up on the race course itself. David Pearson kicking himself around for spinning out last year with two laps to go. He has never won this race, the Daytona 500. That's a surprising thing, isn't it? He's won the firecracker, I don't know, three or four times. He's been grand national champion three times. But he's never won the prestigious Daytona 500. And today it will be the richest stock car race in history. Approximately $350,000 in prize money. Some $44,000 to the winner. And Jackie, I don't have to tell you, it's worth at least five or six times that much in terms of the overall benefit. Well, I think so, because uh, just take an example of the man you're looking at right now, Benny Parsons. He must have enjoyed uh, an enormous amount of success over the last 12 months, and financially he must be a lot better off. So therefore he must be happy. It's very interesting to note in the case of Benny Parsons that this last year he started in 32nd position on the starting grid, and he won the race. And this year he started in the 32nd position again, and he's been leading the race. Of course, now he's in that, uh, that position of opportunity to win again, which is, you know, more than just a stroke of luck, it would seem. Well, if you're a believer in numerology, it certainly is kind of an interesting thing to contemplate. But right now, it is David Pearson in the lead. He had a pit stop on the 129th lap. If I had to project as to when a pit stop would come, it would be around 165 to 168, I would imagine, if they keep running at these speeds. In case you join us a little bit late, Bobby Allison is out of the race uh, with mechanical problems. A.J. Foyt is out of the race. Darrell Waltrip is out of the race. And uh, David Hobbs is out of the race. As I mentioned to you earlier, Buddy Baker went out, was flagged off the course. Cale Yarbert, Burrell didn't even hardly get started before his engine gave way. So we've had a lot of big names uh, go out behind pit row today. All right, let's go down to Chris Economaki. He has a report for us. Okay, Ned, it looks as though Benny, Benny Parsons may not finish this race. He has... Pearson is coming in. Chris, I don't know whether you can see it or not, but right. down the road from you is uh, David Pearson's car. I'm right by that car. He's coming in. His engine is smoking a little bit. He's going to have a break here. Benny Parsons in number 72 has lost the cylinder, as crew chief told me. They do not think that car can go the distance. So it's a plus for David Pearson. His crew doesn't know that as yet. And David Marcus' crew went back to the garage area changed the cylinder head. They were out of the race for more than 60 laps. Dave Marcus is now back on the track. Back to you, Bill. Thank you. A 16-second pit stop. How that for the uh, Wood Brothers crew? And Pearson is back out on the race course. In second place now is Richard Petty in car number 43. David Pearson stopped on the 165th lap, so he easily should be able to run 35 laps. Barring anything happening, he certainly ought to be able to do it on the fuel. Bill Fleming along with Jackie Stewart and Chris Economaki back at the Daytona International Speedway. Richard Petty has the lead, but keep in mind, he made a pit stop on the 151st lap. We have now reached 168. It would be very problematic if he could go 49 laps without fuel. So Richard Petty is due to come in. However, David Pearson, car number 21, pitted on the 165th lap. He could go 35 laps on the fuel that he got. So keep in mind that even though Richard Petty has this amount of distance on the racetrack, he still will have to come in for fuel. 
If a yellow came out, Bill, it would have to help a great deal in the case of Richard Petty. He's sort of relying on that because then probably David Pearson would come into the pits as well. Not only would they take on fuel at that time, they would probably take on tyres as well. The reason for that is that they don't wear the tyres out this close to the end of the race, but they would get new tyres which would be cooler and would work better on this speedway because, of course, the speedway does change a great deal. And we're going to have an interval timing right now on Richard Petty, the leader of the car you can see in there, car number 43, and you can see the clock running right now as we wait for David Pearson, who's in second position. As the clock stops on the track, it's 5.96 seconds. Now, that's not very much at all. If he does have to stop in a green light, he's in big trouble. If he stops in a yellow, he's still got a big chance of the race, Bill. All right. Uh, we might also, uh, if we can, do it in a, a timing on the leader because if he, if he goes around the two and a half miles in 50 seconds, he does exactly 180 miles an hour. So we might see just exactly how fast Richard Petty is going right now. Difficult to relate with this enormous crowd they've got here, a record crowd. It's difficult to relate how fast these cars are going from the long shots that we're getting here. But when you consider they're averaging more than 180 miles an hour, that's enormous. One moment, we've got all these, a record crowd here. We've got more than 100,000 people in beautiful weather, but with a high wind. A high wind that sometimes can make the cars a little difficult to handle, particularly coming off of the turns, coming off of turn two, for example, and then coming off of four, where there's a big bad bump in any case. I think uh, Chris Economaki has an audio report for us from the pit area. Chris? We just talked with Richard Petty's crew chief, Dale Inman. They say that Richard will be coming in at lap 185 for a final touch of fuel, unless, of course, the yellow flag comes out sooner. Now, this final pit stop is going to be the crucial one for the crews. They can win or lose the race for their man. We ought to take a clocking on the stop by Penny and Pearson when they come up. Back to you, Bill. Yeah, well, here's the important thing, Chris, as far as we're concerned. How about Pearson's crew? Do they feel that, that he has to come in at all, or is he well, home free? We've got a yellow. I'm in there. I mean, that means they'll all come in. That's just academic now. That It'll be sure a race is. to the finish if there's no more yellow flag. Back to you, Bill. Okay, and it was caused by car number 63, Terry Bivens of Shawnee Mission, Kansas. Yes, everything you just said indicated, of course, that uh, the yellow being out means that they can come in under the yellow on the 174th lap. All of the hardened veterans of Pit Road, the callous ones that never watched the race, are out on the wall now. Wait to see what's going to happen between Richard Petty and David Pierce. A few years ago in July, a spectacular finish erupted between these two. Every person to a man has dropped what they're doing down here to watch the outcome of this 18th annual Daytona 500. The spectators and the pit crews have suddenly become spectators now. Back to you, Bill. Okay, that's a very good observation, Chris, because most of the time they can't see much from down there, but what they're really seeing now are two of the great nights of NASCAR racing jousting right down to the final. It really has boiled down to just that. Two cars, and there they are. They're on your screen with five laps to go. And it's really only going to be in the last three laps, Bill, that they're going to choose where to position themselves because they've been around this racetrack so many times, they've been rushing for the flag so many times that they almost know which mark on the road to really stand on it and really get onto the right part of the racetrack. Remember, both of those drivers are going round this racetrack flat to the floor of the accelerator all of the time. They're never off it. So therefore, it's not a question of standing on it. It's a question of where you are on the racetrack, where to pick up the draft, and where to take it from there. And my goodness, when you've got two old foxes like they are, there's nothing much to choose from. All right, as uh, we look at them, we see Benny Parsons in car number 72. He's the third place car, and he is a lap down. Then let's get to the side of Lenny Pond, who is the fourth place car, two laps down, and a young fellow by the name of Neil Bonnet, car number 12. He's just a rookie, comes from Hueytown, Alabama. He could very well wind up in fifth place and pretty good money there for a rookie. There's not many people walking away from the speedway right now. You know, when you get to the closing laps of a motor race, normally you see the people trying to get out just before the end, before the, the crowd start to get out. But I haven't seen one person move from the seat so far. They want to see the show. And what a show we have seen here today. A lot of the favorites did go out. Bobby Allison went out. Cale Yarborough went out very early. A.J. Foyt went out of the race. Darrell Walter, one of the young chargers, was out of the race. Uh, after making a good run at the thing. But right now, there they are, two men. And 
and they've completed 197 laps. Okay, when they come by here, they will be on the 199th lap. 198 completed. So the next time around, we will have the checkered, I mean, not the checkered.